Harold Meyerson has a, a good article in the Washington Post where he's quoting the work of the economist Emmanuel Says, who, who we have alluded to in the past, but he gave good context to it. And uh, we've talked about how much the top 1% are getting. Like Even in the economic recovery, uh, the top 1% are getting most of the money. We've told you that before, but here's some interesting context to it. So in the early 1990s, the top 1% captured 45% of the income growth when our economy was improving. Remember, we had a little bit of a recession, we're coming out of the recession, and you know what, the top 1% get 45% of the gains. Now that seems gigantic proportion, but at least 99% of us were getting a little over half. Well, the next time we had a, a, a bust was the dot-com bust in the early 2000s. But when we uh, did the economic recovery from there, who benefited? Well, the top 1% wound up getting 65% of the income growth when we rebounded. Wow, it got to be significantly larger. Jesus, that's nearly two-thirds, obviously. Well, what happened after this recession, when we started to rebound in 2010, how much did the top 1% get of that growth? 93%. The system has gotten so much worse over time that the top 1% are getting almost all of the extra gains. Any benefit of the, econo uh, the economy recovering is going straight to the richest people in the country. It's because we haven't done anything to fix this broken system. For 30 years, Republicans and conservatives have been breaking the system, meaning that they are rigging the rules in favor of certain corporations so that those corporations can crush small businesses, can crush their competition, get all the tax loopholes so they don't even have to pay taxes, so that they get subsidies like the oil companies, etc. Rigging the rules so that you have unfair competition, so that it is not a free market. And then lowering taxes for the rich and the corporations so that they have even more breaks and more breaks. And what is the result of that? Well, obviously, the money is flowing to the top. It is not trickling down to the rest of us. That is a lie. And unfortunately, we have not changed anything in that system. So the next time there's a, you know, ec an economic crash, once again, we will suffer. And if we ever recover, again, the very richest people will get even a bigger percentage of that recovery. We have to fix the underlying problems, which is this gross inequality that we have. We don't have free competition. Our politicians are bought by the corporations and by the rich. Now, to give you a sense of how much the middle class is getting crushed, back in 1968, 28% of the workers in this country were in unions. At that time, 53% of the income in the country went to the middle class. Look, again, it could be higher, but hey, that's not bad. At least we're hanging in there. Well, now in 2010, unions are way down. They're at 11.9%, so almost half of what they used to be. No, way less than half they, than they used to be. And so what happened to the middle class? It's down to only 46.5% of the income in the country. It means that, you know, it's, there's many different, uh, you know, facts that go into that between 1968 and 2010, including the you know, the loopholes that are put in, including the lower taxes on the rich, including all the ways that they rig the game. But one of the factors is that the unions that were supposed to watch out for the middle class and the average guy and the blue collar worker, well, when they got whittled down, nobody looked out for you. And, I, and I'm not a huge defender of the unions, no matter what the circumstances are, no. But as you can see, uh, when you look at the overall picture, well, they helped the middle class in the past, and now without them, the middle class is suffering because of that and other factors. Now, of course, what the Republicans always tell you is, no, 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 no. No, lower taxes isn't to help the rich. No, lower taxes is to help you. Because if we lower taxes on the rich, well, then we create more jobs and the economy gets better. Here's one of many problems with that. Under Clinton, we raised taxes. And what happened? In his eight years, we created over 23 million jobs. Under George Bush, we dramatically cut taxes on the rich. And what happened? We only created 3 million jobs. And by the way, by the way a lot of which were immediately lost in the recession that he created. So in the first year of Obama, a lot of those jobs were lost anyway because he had created this catastrophic recession. But even if you give him the benefit of the doubt and say 3 million, Bill Clinton, who raised taxes, literally created 20 million more jobs than George Bush who lowered taxes. If you give them all of the benefit of the doubt, at the very least, the whole idea of cutting taxes was to create more jobs. Did they create more jobs? 
Hell no. They created 20 million less jobs. Cutting taxes for the rich isn't for the benefit of the rest of us, it's for the benefit of the rich, which is the most obvious thing in the world. But everybody in Washington has been drinking this Kool-Aid on purpose and getting you to drink it because they get paid by the rich. Those politicians are bought and corrupt. So they just come to you and they go, oh, drink up, drink up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, tax cuts for the rich is really going to help you. <laughs> As, of course, 93% of the benefit goes to the top 1%. It's been a lie all along. 